Hello to all the early birds who have already joined in. We'll get started in just a few minutes. While you wait, if you'd like to start thinking of some questions you have around using the platform in your classroom, please feel free to post them in the questions panel. We'll wait just a few more minutes for the rest of the attendees to trickle in before we jump into the presentation. Hello and good afternoon, It's Learning users. Thank you for joining us today for the It's Learning Academy webinar, The Library in Your Collections. This is a guided walkthrough of some of the features available to you in the It's Learning platform, including sharing content to the library, searching the library, and more. My name is Julie. I'm a marketing manager here at It's Learning, and I'll be moderating this webinar. The demonstration portion will take roughly 25 to 30 minutes with time at the end to answer your questions. If you have any questions at any point during the presentation, please feel free to drop them into the questions box in your GoToWebinar panel. If we don't cover it in the course of the webinar or we're not able to answer during the Q&A portion, we will have someone from our services team follow up with you afterwards. Please note that for today's demonstration, we're using It's Learning Modern. So if you're still using the classic version, there might be some minor differences in your platform, but the basic functionality still applies. Our presenter today is Scott Gaglione. He is a project manager and pedagogical consultant here at It's Learning. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Julie. I'm excited to be a part of this webinar. So as I mentioned, today we're going to be covering uh, all of the ways that you can share content in the library, uh, all the ways that you can search the library, and your content collections. All right, let's get started. Scott, take it away. All right, so today I'm going to show you how to share content to the It's Learning Library and how to search for content in the It's Learning Library as well. First, I'd like to start with sharing to the library. Now, there are a couple different ways you can share to the library either from the library where you add a new resource or from a course with the resource that you've already added to that course. First, I'll talk about sharing directly to the library. So I'm logged into my It's Learning site as a teacher, but please note that what I'm about to show you is the same process if you were from a, a district, a central office type of position. So as a teacher, I am logged in and I click on library, navigate to the library, and so now I'm in the library, and in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a green button that says Add. And I'm going to go ahead and click that because I want to create new content in the library and share it. So I click Add, and now these are the resources available for me to add to the library. For today, uh, for this example, I'm going to add a file. So I will click on File. And if I have the file on my computer, on my desktop, I can simply drop it right here, or if I wanted to bring a file from my Dropbox, my Google Drive, or my OneDrive, I could simply click on that button. I'm going to select the file from my computer, so I'll click on File. And choose Water Cycle. And so it's uploading, and before I go ahead and save it though, I wanna make sure I give it a title because otherwise it will show in the library this title. Click the add title, which is not very descriptive. So I'm gonna call this water cycle. 
and then I'm going to save the file. Now at this point, this file has been added to the Your Collection section of the library, so it's not published for other uh, users to see it. And I'd like to show you the process for publishing it to the general library. So I'm going to click on publish in the upper right hand corner. And this is uh, some options for metadata that you can add to the, the resource in the library to make it easier for uh, users to find it. So for description, I can say this is a selection explaining the water cycle. Uh, keywords, we'll talk a little bit about keywords when we're searching um, in the library later in this webinar, but for right now, I'll just put in a few keywords, science, water cycle, and maybe the grade level. Now, in its learning, you have the option to share this resource at different levels of our library. So the first one you'll see is the It's Learning community. And if I was to share this to the It's Learning community, it would be possible for any user on any site in the entire world to be able to find this resource. But if I wanted to restrict it to say my school district, I would drop, click on the drop down and select my school district. And for today, that school district would just be our demo site. You'll notice some advanced options that you can also add uh, information for. So, for example, if I wanted to choose a grade level, and if this was for seventh grade, I could check the box. If I wanted to add learning objectives, that way when uh, users search for learning with learning objectives or standards, they would be able to pull up this resource. I could choose the language that this resource is in. The next uh, section says allow copies. What this does is if I leave this box checked, then other users can add this resource from the library and then make their own version of it. And that way uh, they can edit it as they need to to fit their needs. Um, it's a personal preference if you check this box or not. I'm okay with it, so I'm going to leave it checked. The next section is intended for. Who is this intended for? What type of users? You see you have student, teacher, and mentor. Um, because this is a reading selection, I'm going to put it for student and teacher. And then the final option is format. What type of resource is this? Is it an audio recording? Is it a picture? Is it a link to an interactive website, a text-based document, which is what this is, or is it a video? So since it's text-based, I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click Publish. And so now my resource is published to the library, and you'll notice that it's in the collection. Now, if I needed to go back and edit any of that metadata that I wanted, or that I had put in before and I wanted to update it, I could simply click on Edit Publish Settings and kind of revisit the different options. If for some reason I wanted to delete the resource, if I didn't want it to stay there, I could click on the ellipsis in the upper right corner and click delete. Now notice I have a couple of options here. I can simply unpublish the resource, which would put it back in my collection, remove it from the library for everyone else uh, at the level that I shared it, or I can go on and fully delete the resource and then it wouldn't be in uh, my collection or the library. I want to keep it where it is, so for right now, I'm going to hit cancel. Now, before I mentioned that it was possible to also share an existing piece of, re of content from a course, so I'd like to walk you through how I would do that as well. So I'm going to navigate to one of my courses, 7th grade science, and I'm going to go to my resources. And I'm going to click on this water cycle group project. And you'll notice in the upper right hand corner this add to library button. Now, before I press it, I do want to share that in order to be able to share an item to the library, you do need to be the owner 
or creator of that resource. So if you have a file in your course and you do not see the add to library option, it's most likely because you're not the owner of that. Someone else has uploaded that file. So I'm going to click on add to library and notice I have a couple of different options. I have add and publish or I have add to your collection. Add and publish will put me through the same process that I went through with uh, the library before. Add to your collection would mean that it's just available in my collection. And the reason you might want to do that is if you teach multiple courses with the same content, putting it in your collection would allow you to edit that resource in your collection and then the updates would be shared to those existing instances in your courses. If you didn't put it in your collection, you would have to go to each course and either upload a new file or edit the page, if you will. So I'm going to click on Add and Publish. And you'll see the same metadata field that you saw when we went through the library. So this is a, a description field explaining what this is about. So this is a group project. Uh, for seventh grade students to share their oops, information about the water cycle. And the process is the same. So I can select keywords that I would like to be attached to this file. I might add group project because that's what this is and of course water cycle. The next option is the same. Who is it available to? And I want to keep this within my own school. And then I have my advanced options again. And one of the things about adding the metadata, the more that you can add here, the better it's going to be for users that are searching for this content. Um, so just as much of this information as you can fill out, I would recommend filling that out. And I put in all of my metadata and I'm going to click publish. And so now what you'll notice is up in the um, upper left next to the title of the file, you'll see this little library icon. And that lets you know that it's been uh, it's a lib a resource from the library and it shows who the author is. One last caveat about sharing to the library that I'd like to mention. Some districts may restrict a teacher's ability to share to the library. There is a profile setting that uh, gives school districts the ability to decide if teachers can share to the library and if so, at what levels they can share to the library. So if you go to try and share something to the library and you don't have that option, that may be something you want to talk to your school district about. So that is what it, uh, what it looks like when you are sharing items to the library. Now I'd like to show you what it's like to search in the library. And there's a few different ways that you can search for content in the library. The first way I'd like to show you is from the resource section of a course. And to do that, I would navigate to the resources tab and simply click the add button right near the top. Now in order to go into the library, I need to scroll all the way down and I'm gonna select content from library. Keeping with my theme from when I was sharing to the library, I'm going to search for water cycle. And after searching for water cycle, you see here are my results for the water cycle. But before I get to that, I'd like to talk about some of the filters available on the right hand side. So before, when I was talking about sharing to the library, I talked about the importance of that metadata and adding that the information to help it be easier for teachers to search for content. Well, these are uh, kind of the filters available and you'll see a lot of the, uh, the same ones from when I was sharing to the library. So the first one, I can add a learning objective. 
I can change the grade level. So if I'm working in seventh grade and I kind of want something from secondary, I might change that. Next, I have assessment types. Am I looking for a specific guru assessment or just an assignment that's been shared to the library? Or am I looking for resource types? Again, you'll see some guru content. Uh, LTI tool that refers to content from a third party publisher such as HMH or STEM scopes. Am I looking for a file or link, a page, or a Word document? Please note that when these pop up, that means that within the results, there are all these types of resources or assessments available. So you may see different ones when you search for the library. I have the option to select the format. If I'm looking for a video or something that maybe is interactive. If my students are working on something that doesn't uh, use Flash, maybe I need to uncheck this so it doesn't include Flash-based content. Reading grade level. Now that is specific to some pieces of content. Not all content will have a reading grade level assigned to it, but again, that may be an option. Same with educational intent. Is this just for practice? Is this for teaching students? Again, that's all based off the metadata that whoever shared this to the library included. The language. So you can see I have a few options. So that means within my results, there are resources that are in these four different languages. Maybe I'm looking for a specific author's name. Maybe there's someone I teach with and I want to search for his or her name because I know the content that she shared is what I'm looking for. And then also I have an option for provided by. So that means I can select only content from my school district or from specific third party content providers. I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to choose a guru playlist. And so now all of my results will be guru playlists. And if I go to the first one and I hover over it, you'll see on the right hand side any of the available metadata. So that lets you know that this, is, this resource is aligned to these standards. So if I click on the card, new menu will open up and that has a little bit more information. I can view the resource, which I will do in a moment. I can add it to my course. I can also see when it was published, if there have been any ratings or reviews from other users that have used it. Here are the standards and also who is it intended for. In order to view the resource, I click on view resource. And what you see here is the playlist broken out on the left-hand side, and I can read through it, click on each of the items, and see what is contained in the, this Guru playlist. If I like what I see, I simply X out, and I'm right back where I was. And if I'd like to add it to my course, I can simply click Add to Course. And down here, it says Water Cycle has been added to the course and I'm all set. I can either go back to the library to search some more, or if that's all I need for today, I can click on the X. When I go back to my resources, down here you will see the water cycle. Now I mentioned before there were a few different ways I can add content to my course from the library. The first one I just showed you was the resources. Another way I can do it is from within plans. And in order to do that, I simply click on plans. And I could scroll down to my plan for this week. And right here where it says add resource, if I click add resource, you'll see it one side says create new. Over here on the right, I can add from. And I'm going to select library.
Now, one of the things I'd like you to notice right off the bat is there are already standards populated. And if I hover over them, I can see the standards that are aligned with that lesson plan. And so the benefit to using the plan and putting learning objectives is that when I go to search the library from my lesson plan, my standards are already there. And I can add more or I can click on X to remove these if I want, but it's one less step for me to take. Notice at the top, I can still search using keywords. So if I type in water cycle and hit search, it's gonna keep those standards, but it also shows results for water cycle that are also aligned to that learning objective. And down the right-hand side under your filter results, you have options to narrow what you're looking for. I'm going to hover over the first um, resource. And this shows the standards, but it also has a little bit more. I can see some keywords, and I can also see the grade level that that's intended for. So knowing that I'm working in a seventh grade science course, and this grade level is aligned from three through eight, that might be something I want to investigate more. So I click on the resource. And that same uh, kind of profile card for the resource opens up, gives you a, an overview of what the resource is. Uh, there's no reviews yet, but they would show here if there were. And then here's some more of that metadata, the standards, the keywords, grade level. This also includes the reading grade level, who it's intended for, and what the educational intent is of this resource. So before I go ahead and add it to my plan, I'm going to click View Resource again, just to kind of make sure that this is what I want to, to go in my plan. And after viewing it, I can pop back to the same place and click Add to Plan. And down here, I get a message that it's been added to the plan. If I'm finished, I can click X, the X. If I want to search for more, I can go back to library. I'm going to click the X, and there you see it. Right there, added to the, the plan, um, is that resource that I just showed. Now, as you can see, it's, it's pretty simple to search for the library, either from the resources tab or from the plans. But there's a third way you can search the library as well without even going into it. And the way you would do that is by simply clicking on library up in your top menu bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click library. And similar to how it looked when I was sharing content during the first portion of this webinar, instead of clicking on add, I'm going to go down to the keyword search box and type in water cycle. And this looks very similar to how it looked when I went through the resources tab or to the plans tab. So you're probably getting very familiar with this if you're not already. Over here on the right hand side, I have my filter results. So I can change, you know, add standards, change grade level, all those types of um, options that I had before. I'm going to click on the first resource and just like before it shows a profile card with the name of the resource who it's from uh, an overview of what this is about and then any of the metadata standards keywords grade level what have you one thing that's a little different though about this is when I click add to I have a few options now remember, I went through the library, so technically I'm not in a course. So instead of it being added just to the course I was in or the plan I was in, I have some options for where I want to add it. Maybe for right now, I just want to put it in my collection or in a course, but not align it to a plan. 
or I could add it to a course plan, similar to how I did in my last demonstration. So I click on add resource to a plan, and I'm gonna choose my seventh grade science course. And notice I have, these are sections or units in my planner. I'm gonna click on what is the water cycle, and click add. And down here at the bottom, it says it has been added to the course and connected to the plan. And it gives me a shortcut to go to the course. So if I click on that, it will take me right to the plan. And you can see this is the resource that I just added to the plan from the library. So today, I have shown you how to search for content in the library and add content from the It's Learning Library. And I hope the next time you're in the platform that you will visit the library as well. Well, thank you, Scott. Um, during your presentation, we did get some questions come through. Um, so we've got one here from Jason. He asked, if I shared a resource to the library, like a page, how would I edit the resource? Also, what would happen to any other instances of the page that teachers may have added to their course? Great question, Jason, and it's one that I do get quite often. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how you would edit a resource like a page that has been shared to the, to the library. Uh, so I'm gonna go to uh, my seventh grade math course for this one. And I'm gonna go to resources. And use this page about ratios. So when this page opens up, you'll see that there is a library icon next to the title. So that tells me it's in the library. And you can see there are no editing options in this page. So in order to edit this page, I would click on the ellipsis and choose Edit Original. And remember, because I'm the owner of this page, I was able to share it to the library. Also, because I'm the owner, I'm able to edit the original. If I'm not the owner, I won't even have that option. So clicking Edit Original will take me into the library. And if you look up here, you'll notice I'm in the Your Collection section of the library. So to make any changes, let's say I wanted to rearrange some of the blocks on the page, I could do that. I could edit the publish settings if I needed to. or I can leave it as is, and that's how you would edit the page. Now, if I go back to my math course, and again, click on resources, you will see that this content block has been moved over. This one was over here on the left, and it's moved to the right. So any instance of the page that other teachers may have added to their course will be updated automatically. All right, we've got another one here from Nathaniel. He's asked, I noticed a share button in the library. What does that do? Why would I use that button instead of just publishing the resource to the library? Uh, great question, Nathaniel, and this is a, a feature that I really like. So I'm going to stick with my About Ratios page, and I'm going to click Edit Original, so it'll take me back to the library. And I just want to point out the Share button. So this is the Share button that Nathaniel was asking about. And the reason that you might use this is, let's say you created a resource and you wanted a colleague to kind of vet the resource before you put it out into the library. Well, if I started to type um, that colleague's name, their name would pop up and I could share it with them. And notice that the other person can also edit the page. So they would have that edit original option um, on the page that I showed before. Um, another reason that you might want to use the share button is if you're working collaboratively with a colleague on a page and um, you want to both be able to edit the page, that using the share option 
allows you to have a central place to work on the page inside of the library. And another nice feature is when I share it with a colleague, it is automatically added to the Your Collection section of their library. So simply they would go to the library, click on the Your Collection tab, and they would be able to see the resource. So if I show, um, here is the About Ratios page that I just shared, and it shows you that it is shared with one person. Thank you. Um, we also have a question here from Angela. She asked, are users able to search the library for content that has been shared? Good question, Angela. And it's another one that I do get quite often when I'm working with school districts. Um, so similar to how it's possible to enable teachers to share content to the library or not enable that, it's also possible to enable searching in the library for specific profiles. Uh, most districts do restrict it to just teachers. Um, I do know of some, however, that have enabled it for students, which um, I think is a great idea. But again, that's a district decision um, and is really uh, best left to an internal discussion. So if you do not see the option to search the library, that may be a question for a district administrator. Great, and I think we have time for a couple more. Uh, Jody asked, when Scott was searching the content in the library, I saw resources from Guru and Novation in the search results. Is this content available for all users of its learning? Good question, Jody. Um, so uh, the Guru content, that's what we would call kind of open ed resources, and we do have uh, over 2 million Guru resources loaded in the Ed's Learning Library. But please note that there is an option for district administrators to turn off that content for school districts. So it's possible that if you do not see the Guru content in your library that your district has decided to not allow that to be uh, loaded in your Ed's Learning Library. Um, for resources such as Novation, that would be something that, that we call third-party content, uh, similar to an HMH or a STEM scopes. Uh, and that is really depends on your district and if they have purchased, purchased that content um, in electronic format and had, uh, have had it loaded into your library. Um, so if they have, you will be able to see that content, but if not, it would be restricted to content that teachers, um, have shared to the library and maybe the guru content depending on your district decision. Cool. And we have time for one more. Mallory asked, why would I add a resource to the your collection section of my library instead of just copying it from one course to another? Great question. And I do get it quite often. Um, I think that the best Part about putting something in your collection, and I alluded to it a little bit before. Um, if I teach uh, two courses and I use some of the same content, so I may have the same page in both courses, if it's in the Your Collection section of my library, I can go in there and make edits to that page, and then the instances in both of my courses are updated automatically. If I simply copied it from one course to another, I would have to make edits on both instances of that page. So by adding it to your collection, that allows you to edit it inside of your library and the results sent to all instances in your courses. Um, so uh, instead of having to edit both versions, in my example, you could do it once and save time, which as a former teacher, I know we never have enough of. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, that's all we have time for for today. Thanks, everyone who joined us today. We hope you found today's It's Learning Academy webinar helpful. Each of you will receive a follow-up email with the webinar recording. We'd love to get your feedback on this webinar and your suggestions for future It's Learning Academy topics. So if there's anything It's Learning related that you'd like to learn more about, please take a few minutes after we close out 
to complete the post-webinar survey. Your input is very important to us. Thanks again and have a great week.